Um, yeah, I'm Hendrik Tolking from the Institute of Mechanics and Electronics from the TU Braunschweig, Germany. And I'm going to, I want to like show you our research results on the simulation of 4D printed structures printed with FDM. Um, and we uh, used a novel analytical numerical simulation approach. Um, before I'm uh, like presenting the approach, I want to give a small introduction. Um, when we are 4D printing with FDM, we are always imprinting strain into the layers. Um, here is an example geometry we use in our institute, say bending hinge. Um, and uh, we print, we imprint high strain in the bottom layer, middle strain, uh, low strain in the middle layer and high strain in the top layer. So we get a bending action you can see in the top of the slide. And um, this bending move, this bending transformation is directly dependent on the strain state and the strain in the body. And the strain in the body is dependent on the material we use, the printer, and the activation we're using in our 4D printing process. Um, and the reviewed uh, simulation processes uh, then are purely numerical, um, and they use the, mate uh, the material printing and activation parameters for the simulation. And what we did is we used an analytical numerical simulation approach. So we uh, omitted the parameter uh, acquisition for materials printing and activation, because in our approach, the analytical step uh, delivers the needed data for the numerical simulation. Okay, I want to give my presentation a small structure. I'm going to show you uh, our approach, our simulation approach. Uh, the approach will already contain our uh, research hypothesis. Then I'm going to show you how we how we validated the hypothesis, um, and so how we validated the simulation approach. And in the end, I want to con conclude our results, and I want to assess the approach also compared to the uh, to the uh, existing numerical simulation approaches. Okay, this simulation approach um, begins with the analytical step. The first thing to do in the analytical step is to print simple generic bending bodies with the printer and the, uh, and the material and the activation process we want to use for our simulated structure. When we're doing that, we gain uh, small bended bodies and we can measure the curvature from these bodies. And the curvature is then directly subjected to the used material to the used printer and to the used activation. So uh, this we want to use this parameter to simulate our structure. But uh, we can't like uh, allocate curvatures in FE simulation or other numerical simulation programs like Abacus or ANSYS. So we have to translate this. And we do that with an equation from the classical laminate theory. So we are translating the curvature measured in this, the first step to a thermal strain with coefficient of thermal expansion and a temperature variation. Um, and this thermal strain can then be allocated in uh, E simulation. And we, to do that, we need, uh, we need um, the heights of the K layers from our numerical steps. So we are, we are for example, in Abacus, we are um, like, we, or on other FE simulation programs, we're constructing a part. Um, with uh, K layers, and we take the heights of the K layers from the numerical step uh, to the second step here to the uh, to the equation, um, and we insert, is insert these heights here on the right side of the equation, and then we can transform the curvature we measured in the first step to a layer-wise thermal strain, and we're taking this layer-wise thermal strain back to the numerical step. I'm going to go to another slide so we have more space. We're taking the uh, thermal strain to the uh, um, FE simulation, to the numerical simulation. And then, for example, in Abacus, we can allocate the coefficients of thermal expansion to the uh, specific layers, to the K layers. And then we can define a temperature field with the temperature variation delta T. And when we run the simulation, we get a transformed shape. And that's basically our simulation approach um, for the simulation of 4D printed structures. Um, in our research, we then, um, we then printed validation specimens to uh, assess the approach with the uh, same printer, the same material, and the same activation 
we used for the simple bending bodies in the first step. And in the, in the fifth step, we compared both shapes. And uh, yeah, the hypothesis of our research is that the curvature of the uh, simulated shape lies within the standard deviation of the curvatures of the printed validation specimens. So if that's true, we can accept our hypothesis. So our simulation is working um, like it, it's, it's working accuracy accurate. And if not, um, we have to reject the hypothesis. And yeah, so that's our approach. I'm going to show you how we validate the approach. We have two test setups. Um, the first is an upscale geometry. The second is twisted structures. So in the first, um, we uh, we used uh, the uh, the bending structure I um, introduced in the first slide um, as a simple bending body, and we upscaled it by 1.5 to get the uh, uh, to get the simulated structure. So we tried to simulate bigger, thicker structure with the approach, and um, this is the result. You can see the curvature plotted for both structures for the small simple bending body and for the upscaled structure. And uh, the box plot shows the printed results. The green circle is the simulated result, the simulated curvature. And the first important insight is that the uh, simulated result for the small hinge for the simple bending body lies directly within the printed results. And that's the first interesting insight because um, when we that's, that means that when we do not have any geometrical changes between the simple bending body in the first step, and the um, simulated structure in the third and fourth step, uh, we we have uh, a perfect simulation results, which means that the simulation works, and occurring errors can be directly subjected to the made geometrical change between step one and step six, uh, step four. So let's go to the upscale geometry. Up, uh, the uh, the simulated structure is um, has an Sim uh, the simulated uh, curvature here has a significant error on the right side. And um, this uh, error is, uh, occurs when we upscale the geometry by 1.5. So we assume if we, up if we upscale the hinge even more, we'll get a, a huger and huger uh, error. So we, we, we came to the point that we could, cannot accept the hypothesis for upscale geometries. So let's move on to the twisted structures. Here we had a simple bending a, a bending beam, and we changed the printing direction of the upper uh, upper upper sec layers to get twisted structures. And um, these are, these are the results. We had four different um, test runs: one with zero degree bending, that's our simple bending body, and then 20, 40, and 60 degree. Um, printing direction change. And we can see the first insight is the same as from the last diagram. We have a perfect simulation result if we don't uh, do any geometrical or structural changes. And But also with the 20 degree bodies, or uh, we have a very good result. And even for 40 and 60, we have acceptable results because you can see there is a significant error, but it's not getting bigger and bigger when we increase um, the, band, the uh, printing angle. So we said we can accept the hypothesis for twisted structure, especially for small for smaller band, uh, angles for smaller printing angles. Okay, I want to like give you a little insight on how we gained the data. We printed <coughs> six um, six validation specimens each, and we had the access to a forty three uh, D scanner, and this three D scanner delivered a point cloud. And in the Gomen spec software, we were then able to like fit in uh, cylinders or for the twist and structure, a cylinder fit wasn't suitable, so we fit in circles, and um, these cylinders and circles delivered uh, like radiuses and curvatures. So we had uh, like a comparable results, and uh, the software was also able to like do direct shape uh, comparisons. Like you can see here, for a forty degree body, uh, the mesh body is the simulated body. We imported it into the software, and the solid colored body is the printed body. And yeah, you can see a good accordance between both structures, even though you have we have uh, this error. You can see in the um, uh, you can see in the diagram. So we we said we can accept the hypothesis for twisted structures. Okay, so I want to conclude our results. 
Um, we have the upscale geometry and the twisted structure. And as I said, we can't accept the hypothesis, so we can't like accept the uh, simulation approach for upscale structures. We can't use it right now for that, but for twisted structures. And our question then was, is it possible to reduce the error we observed, especially with the upscale geometries? And we came up with, it, we, we, we thought it's, we assume that it's possible to correct this using a generic thickness correction factor. So when you determine a thickness change between the generic, the simple bending body and the simulated structure, then you could add this uh, factor and change the coefficients of thermal expansion, the layerwise or the thermal strain, therefore. Um, but this is, uh, should, this is a research object at our institute. So uh, it's, it's to be announced. And yeah, we don't need a correction factor for the twisted structures yet because we accepted the hypothesis. Okay. I want to give a little outlook at the end. Uh, so we wanted to assess the uh, approach. And therefore, we tried to compare the curvatures from two different printers. And we did that by set up, setting up a printing file and uh, printing that on, the on two different printers, but using the same material, the same activation. We tried to uh, install the same offset in both printers and use, yeah, basically use the same printing file. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to gain the same curvature from two different printers. And this is the result. So we had a significant difference between both printers, although we tried to gain the same curvature, which means that um, a printer change always leads to an error um, or an, a difference. And um, that means that if you like want to simulate uh, your structure, and want to use like spreadsheet data from another researcher, yeah, you always have to be aware that, that this such an error can occur. Um, but the, the uh, approach that I presented, um, the novel approach um, covers printer changes because you always like print your simple bending body on your specific printer. So the, your, the um, behavior of your specific printer is already included in the approach. And uh, bottom line, this means that uh, the numerical simulations are good for everyday researchers who have maybe their own printer, who know their printer very well, who have own spreadsheet data for their printer. So they don't need to like pre-print uh, simple bending bodies every time. But for new or occasional users, users who don't have their own printer, this, um, <clears throat> this approach can be, um, very useful because yeah, you you like directly implement every data or the data using the analytical step. Um, thank you for the uh, um, thank you for the attention, and I um, I welcome some questions. I'm welcome to some questions. Thank you so much, and before some hand raises, I have just a question.